Hey everyone, time for another video. In July of 2008, NVIDIA released this, the 9800 GTX Plus, a refreshed version of the 9800 GTX, which itself was a refresh of the 8800 GTS, to compete with AMD's HD4850. Specifically, I have the palette version here today, which features a 745MHz core clock and a shader clock of 1846MHz, with 512MB of GDDR3 memory on a 256-bit bus running at 1100MHz, which is effectively 2200MHz due to the nature of DDR memory. It was based on the Tesla architecture using the G92B GPU, specifically the G92420B1 variant, and featured 754 million transistors built on the 55 nanometer fabrication process. It came with 8 streaming multiprocessors, 128 shading units, 64 texture mapping units, and 16 raster operations pipelines. The 9800's GTX Plus also had support for DirectX 10, OpenGL 3.3, and OpenCL 1.1, with support for two DVI connections and one S video output as well. It has a TDP of 141 watts and is relatively power hungry given its performance compared to today's cards, and required two 6 pin PCIe power connectors to run it. Originally, the 9800 GTX Plus would have set you back 229 US dollars, which today, adjusting for inflation, would be around $270, or around £213, or 236 euros today. However, I managed to buy it for only £10 from CEX here in the UK but it can also be had for around $17 on eBay in America. The rest of the system I'll be using today features an i7-6700K at 4.8GHz to eliminate any potential bottlenecking, a MSI Z278 SLI Plus motherboard, 16GB of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 RAM at 2800MHz, and Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. So let's get on with the tests. To kick off the test for today is Grand Theft Auto 5. GTA 5 is a few years old at this point, but it's still a great game to benchmark due to its popularity. I'll be running the test today in DirectX 10.0 mode, at both 1080p and 720p, and later on I'll get into overclocking as well. Both resolutions were run on the lowest settings possible. I was actually really surprised at how well this card performed at both resolutions. At 1080p, performance in the city was relatively good considering the age of the 9800 GTX Plus. FPS in the city was in the mid-20s to the high-30s range, and on occasion spiked into the low 40s. It did however dip to the low 20s at times as well, and had a couple of occasions where the game briefly locked up. 720p on the other hand never really dropped below 40 frames per second and was in the mid 60s at times depending on the location in the city. There were however a couple of major lockups lasting several seconds that weren't apparent at 1080p. Neither resolutions had any issues with input locking or lag which was a pleasant surprise as well. Out in the desert area, close to where Trevor lives, 1080p often got close to 40 frames per second and stayed above 30 for pretty much the whole test, other than in some parts of the city. 720p got pretty close to 60 frames per second, other than some occasions where it dipped close to 40. 1080p managed average 1% and 0.1% lows of 36, 25 and 21 frames per second respectively, with 720p managing average 1% and 0.1% lows of 53, 38 and 33 frames per second respectively. The frame time graph for 1080p did show two fairly notable gaps between some frames of 180 milliseconds and one at 340 milliseconds, with 720p's graph showing the aforementioned lockups lasting 4.7 and 9.4 seconds respectively. Moving on to the next game in the test today, and it's Counter Strike Global Offensive, which, despite now being a six year old game, is also still extremely popular with a massive professional scene as well. I'll also be running the test at 1080p and 720p with the highest possible settings, minus MSAA which is turned off. I'll be running the test in a competitive hard difficulty bot match on the Mirage map. Both resolutions show the 9800 GTX Plus performing really well and offers more than playable performance. 1080p had the FPS sitting between 60 to 90 frames per second, with spikes of 120 FPS being observed as well. 720p managed between the mid 70s up to around 150 frames per second, with spikes as high as 250 frames per second depending on the area of the map you're in. Neither resolution showed any noticeable start or locking up at all. There's nothing much else to say about the performance, other than that you may experience different FPS figures if you decide to try multiplayer instead.
1080p showed average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 82, 50 and 42 frames per second respectively, with 720p showing average 1% and 0.1% lows of 127, 71 and 59 frames per second respectively. Frame time graphs for both resolutions did however show some dips below 30 frames per second throughout the game, but fortunately those weren't noticeable at all. Next up today is a personal favourite of mine, Warframe. I'll be running the test at 1080p and 720p on the low preset in our survival mission on Jupiter. I also had to force the game to run in 32-bit mode due to fraps not working at all with the 64-bit mode enabled. 1080p wasn't exactly a great experience as the game throughout the whole test appeared really stuttery despite staying over 30 frames per second for the vast majority of the test, which also caused some pretty jarring input lag as well, whereas 720p had no such issue. 1080p did manage to get to 50 frames per second despite this, but still maintained its stuttery appearance. 720p on the other hand never really dropped below 50 frames per second and got close to 100 frames per second throughout gameplay. There were also some very noticeable dips into the mid-20s FPS wise at 1080p in highly intense scenes, with 720p seeming to have no issues with performance drops that I noticed. 720p is definitely the way to go if you're looking to play Warframe on the 9800 GTX Plus, with a lot of space to increase some of the settings if you want to as well. 1080p managed average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 40, 28 and 26 frames per second respectively, which doesn't really show how awful an experience it was. 720p on the other hand managed 69, 48 and 44 frames per second, for its average 1% and 0.1% lows respectively. The frame time graphs showed numerous dips below 30 frames per second throughout the test at 1080p, with 720p's graph also showing a few dips below 30, but these fortunately weren't noticeable at this resolution. Lastly, before moving on to overclocking, it's time for Skyrim, more specifically the original version of Skyrim from 2011, and not the remastered version which was released in 2016. I will again be running the test at 1080p and 720p, but with the high preset and with anti-aliasing and depth of field turned off. And given its age, I was expecting some pretty decent performance, and that's exactly what I got. On the walk to Riverwood near the start of the game, 1080p managed to sit in the mid-40s up to the game's hard limit of 60 frames per second. You can disable this limit, but it may cause some unpredictable performance. 720p, on the other hand, managed to stay on the 60fps limit the entire way into the village. One issue I did notice, however, was that at 1080p, mouse movement wasn't smooth, whereas 720p had no such issue at all. Getting into the village itself, and the frame rate set on the 60fps limit at 720p, with 1080p sticking between 50 to 60 frames per second, with the same being true when you go into the Riverwood Trader. Moving towards Bleak Falls Temple, in 1080p on occasion showed some pretty noticeable stuttering, with FPS sitting anywhere between the mid 40s up to 60 frames per second, with dips to 40 frames per second when the stuttering occurred. 720p on the other hand maintained 60 frames per second for pretty much the entirety of the test, with no obvious lockups or stuttering and was a more than playable experience with space to up the settings if you like. 1080p showed average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 59, 32 and 30 frames per second respectively, with 720p showing 60, 56 and 30 frames per second respectively. The frame time graph for 1080p though showed some gaps between frames of around 230 to 280 milliseconds. 720p showed some dips below 30 frames per second but those weren't noticeable at all. Moving on to overclocking and I didn't exactly have an easy time of it. It was a constant battle of figuring out what clocks the car could run at, only to then have it crash for seemingly no reason and go back to working perfectly fine and being perfectly stable. GTA 5, at least at 1080p, managed 830MHz on the core, with a shader clock of 1950MHz and a memory clock of 1350MHz, but 720p needed a drop to 820MHz on the core to be stable. CSGO, on the other hand, managed to run the same clocks for both resolutions but needed drop to 800MHz on the core with an 1890MHz shader clock and 1325MHz on the memory. Warframe ran perfectly fine with 820MHz on the core, a 1950MHz shader clock and 1350MHz on the memory. Skyrim ran alright at 1080p with 800 on the core, a 1950MHz shader clock and a 1350MHz memory clock, although I did manage to increase the clock for 720p to 820MHz on the core, with a 1950MHz shader clock and 1350MHz on the memory. The overclock made a little bit of a difference to Grand Theft Auto V. Throughout the city, at 1080p, FPS never really got above the low 40s like at stock clocks, but did manage to stay above 30 frames per second. 
It did however creep up to around 45 frames per second in the less densely packed areas of the city. 720p also didn't show much of an improvement, with performance staying at roughly what stock clocks managed, with FPS sitting between the high 40s to the mid 60s depending on the location of the city you were in. Nearer resolution exhibited any stutter or locking up in the city, which was a nice little improvement from the overclock. Out in the desert area, 1080p did however show some brief lockups, which I think was down to the VRAM being maxed out. 720p had no such issue though, due to the textures that 720p uses being smaller and taking up less memory than the textures that 1080p uses. FPS wise, 1080p showed figures in the low 30s to the low 40s range in the desert, with some noticeable dips into the low 20s at times as well. 720p however managed the low 50s up into the 70s and offered pretty smooth gameplay throughout the test. 1080p managed average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 39, 28 and 24 frames per second respectively, and showed multiple dips below 30 frames per second throughout the test according to the frame time graph, with the worst of the gaps between some frames being as bad as over 180 milliseconds. 720p showed average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 61, 44 and 38 frames per second respectively, with the frame time graph also showing some dips below 30 frames per second, although those weren't noticeable during my test. It also showed some gaps between some of the frames of around 40 to 80 milliseconds at times. CSGO also didn't really show much of an improvement in performance, other than that 720p, although, to be fair, performance was already pretty decent at stock clocks anyway. 1080p again managed around the low 60s to the high 120s FPS wise, with occasional spikes upwards of 170 frames per second indoors. 720p managed around 110 to 180 frames per second, compared to the 70 to 150 frames per second it managed without an overclock. I also noticed some spikes as high as 275 frames per second indoors, which is amazing considering the age of the 9800 GTX Plus, and shows it to still be pretty capable when it comes to easy to run games like Counter Strike Go. Overall, CSGO runs pretty smoothly at both resolutions and shows no noticeable star or locking up at all that I could see. 1080p managed average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 87, 50 and 44 frames per second respectively, with 720p showing average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 140, 83 and 69 frames per second respectively. The frame time graphs for both resolutions show that the game did in fact dip below 30 frames per second at points, but however these weren't noticeable at all during my test and had no effect on gameplay whatsoever. With Warframe, the overclock couldn't really save 1080p from being complete crash yet again. FPS had creeped up slightly to the high 30s to around 60 frames per second, but unfortunately the game still suffered from the stuttery appearance at 1080p as stock clocks showed, making it a pretty uncomfortable experience regardless of any improvement. 720p on the other hand actually showed a slight decrease in performance, despite a slightly higher average frame rate compared to stock clocks. Its 1% and 0.1% lows are in fact lower than stock, which shows it to have more stutter than before the overclock. It was still quite playable, mind you, with FPS in the high 40s to nearly 100 frames per second range. 1080p showed some FPS dips to around 28 frames per second, with some very noticeable slowdowns at times throughout the mission as well. 720p only showed some micro stuttering on one occasion and runs pretty smoothly otherwise. 1080p showed average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 47, 32 and 28 frames per second respectively, a small improvement over stock clocks. 720p managed 75, 46 and 41 frames per second for its average 1% and 0.1% lows respectively. 1080p showed multiple occasions where the FPS dropped below 30 frames per second according to the frame time graph, with the frame times being massively inconsistent throughout the entire test. 720p also showed some dips below 30 frames per second as well, according to its frame time graph, and also showed inconsistent frame times throughout, however this wasn't really noticeable at all. Lastly for the test today is back to Skyrim, and given that the performance of stock clocks had both 1080p and 720p sitting on the game's hard limit of 60 frames per second, I wasn't really expecting an improvement, and in some regards I was right as both 1080p and 720p had average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates that were identical to stock clocks under around 1080p which had a slightly higher 1% low than stock clocks managed. 1080p though did manage to stick to the 60 frames per second limit on the walk into Riverwood other than on one occasion where the FPS dropped to 57 for a short moment. 720p again maintained the 60fps limit as well 
In the Riverwood Trader, FPS did drop to around 55 frames per second with some noticeable stutter as well at 1080p, whereas 720p had no issues here whatsoever. In and around the Bleak Falls Temple, 1080p again dipped into the 40s FPS wise with some noticeable micro stuttering as well. Again, no issues here for 720p. There isn't much more to say performance wise due to how little an improvement there was, other than 1080p managed an average 1% and 0.1% lows of 59, 35 and 30 frames per second respectively, with 720p managing average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 60, 56 and 30 frames per second respectively. 1080p, according to its frame time graph, had multiple drops under 30 frames per second, with one occasion in which there was a gap between frames of around 260 milliseconds. 720p also showed some dips below 30 frames per second as well, but fortunately I didn't notice these during the test. Overall, I was actually extremely surprised as to how well the 9800 GTX Plus performed in my tests, especially in Grand Theft Auto V, which I had assumed would be pretty much unplayable at both resolutions regardless of what overclock it would manage. I'd expected CSGO to perform reasonably well, but the card still surpassed my expectations and provided a more than playable experience, even without an overclock. As Warframe is a new addition to my tests, I wasn't too sure what to expect from that performance-wise, but it was nice to see that it was still playable, at least at 720p. Skyrim performed as expected though, because given its age, and with the original version of the game being relatively easy to run nowadays, I was expecting it to perform reasonably well. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and leaving a comment as well, maybe even sharing it to anyone you think may enjoy it, or may benefit from it in some way. I'd also really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel as well if you'd like to see more content like this. So thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.